hormones. The three parts of the uh, lecture which we will see that. Number one, chemical signals. They are chemical signals. Okay. Then we will study about the release of these signals, how this is being released. Release as well as the action, where the signals will act. Action, okay, action on target cells. What are the target cells? Okay. And then we will see specific examples. Specific examples of hormones, okay. Here we will see about glucose regulation that is by glucagon and insulin. Okay. Then we will study about the cold stress hormones that is on thyroid hormone and then reproduction we will see that. That is the luteinizing hormone and uh, follicle stimulating hormone LH and FSH. Okay. And then the fourth part is a, a development in the insect. Development in the insect. Because we have to compare the another part. Okay. This is the overview of this lecture. Okay. And we are going to look the first part, how the hormones are acting as a chemical signal. That's our first part, okay? Chemical signals. In, in, in general, the hormones are, uh, you know, the signals coming from the external as well as the internal environment, okay? Suppose the chemical is the external environment that how these hormones are acting as an external environment is we call it as a chemo detection because the chemical which is coming outside, chemo detection, okay? This chemo detection is uh, um, something like olfaction, you know, by nostrils, by the smell, Okay, all fraction as well as by taste, you know. So these, the chemical signals, the hormones which is coming outside the body and that is being, um, you know, sniffed by the other, uh, you know, by the animals or different type of animals and then also by taste of those hormones and they can regulate. So that part is the chemical signal will, will act as a chemo detection, one part. So this is called again external, external, okay, uh, that is the environmental sensation. It helps the, the chemical signal or the hormone will sense of that. And this will uh, help in, in the all organisms, this characteristic would is include all organisms all organisms that including prokarya, including prokarya, so that's bacteria, okay, prokarya, they call it as a bacterial chemo detection, bacterial chemo detection, okay, these are the chemical signals which we we are discussing now, um, it, it mainly on the external environmental as well as the sensation by olfaction and the taste in a, in a higher animals. But in the lower animals like in a prokaryotes or bacteria, the chemical detection or the chemo detection plays a major role. We will see one example on that part, okay? And also we have intracellular signals, okay? Just now I put extracellular as well as the intracellular signals, that is the internal environment. We study about the external environment, internal, I-N-T-E-R-N-E-L, internal environment. Okay. 
this internal environments A is for the inside the cell. Inside the body, tissue, as well as in cells. Okay. So, inside. So, it will further divided into A, intracellular detection, intracellular, I-N-T-R-A, intracellular, cellular, and B, extracellular, extracellular. So, what is intracellular? Meaning, inside the cell. Intra means inside. So, inside the cell, the communication. That is on the molecular interactions. Molecular interactions, also they call it as a biochemical interactions. Biochemical. This is intracellular. I'll just draw a small cell here. There's the nucleus. So, the signals which is going to be inside from the cytoplasm either from the membrane to the signal to the nucleus or nucleus to the cytoplasm. So, this is purely on inside one cell and this type of changes and, and, and the hormonal environment and, and the actions due to the hormones or the chemical, uh, chemical signals and all inside one cell that is called intracellular. Another one is the extracellular, meaning the one cell and communicate into the other cell. This is the cell number one and this is cell number two. They communicate to this cell, how they will do it, That's extracellular. One best example for extracellular is as a neurons, okay. I put it that extracellular signals from one cell to the other cell. I mentioned before, here the one cell and this is another cell, okay, another cell. So how this signals to this? That's the use of neurons using neurotransmitters. Transmitters. N-E-U-R-O-T-R-A-N-S-M-I-T-T-E-R-S, -E -E neurotransmitters. Also, they help in the, um, the external signals also help in the development, okay, development of organism. That is, again, a cell to cell interaction. Cell to cell communication or cell to cell interactions. Okay. This is a this is another type of uh, um, you know signals. The another type the extracellular signals is coming from, from cell one to cell two by neurons. There are nervous system neurons and it releases a neurotransmitter is the language. So this will order this cell to change, how this will they communicate with this cell to this using neurons, it, it, it pass on certain chemical signals to the nerve ending and these neurons will pass it on to another one and another one and then here this language, it will speak the language of this and it will listen and then it will change. You may wonder how come this cell is communicate specific to this cell? One example is I can give you um, a person who is learning French and he is in a football stadium and he is shouting in language French. Who will listen to the French language in U.S.? Those who knew the language, they can understand him. Otherwise, nobody will not understand. The same way, if the cell will speak of that particular neurotransmitters or the signals and here the cells will have the receptors. Only those cells will have the receptors for that particular neurotransmitters, then only they can recognize this action, this communication, this language. Otherwise, they cannot. Okay. So, we also going to look into the receptors of these hormones on the cell-to-cell -cell communications, then how these signals are being transmitted. Follow? Okay. Now, we shall go on to the 
the next part is the, uh, there, are, there are two different part of those, um, the hormones in the system, okay. And also in the membrane, which I mentioned before, how the cell will, um, will communicate, cell communication. Any communication, you need the language. And if you know, if you study, if you learn, then only you can understand that language. So here, the cell communication also, that depend upon, upon the, uh, the communication process. Where the communication in the cell, if it is the nucleus, the cell, they have the receptor, R for receptors, R for receptors. So throughout the membrane, or the cellular membrane, there are different receptors are already there. And these receptors are the proteins. They call it as a membrane protein. Okay? You follow now? Okay. Now I'm going to classify this one as a, semi, uh, as a chemical communications, okay? And um, how they, there are different types of, um, of the glands as well as the, uh, the function or the, how the communication is going to take place using these hormones, okay? We call it as chemical communication. Chemical communication, okay. Suppose this is a cell, okay. This cell will secrete a signal, signal 1. And this signal, again, in turn, will, will activate this own cell, meaning the cell will also have its receptors, okay. So this type of 1, signal and that signal is activate its own self or the self otherwise we call auto we call it as this process we call it auto crying process cell will secrete a signal and signal can be recognized by the its own receptors own receptors this process see it is not going to next are distant one we will see the later but the first to start with the cell that secrete a signal can recognize the same signal by its own receptor is called autocrine process follow that part autocrine process okay now next one suppose this is cells communicating cells okay this is another cell Another cell, another cell, another cell. This is going on. All the N for nucleus. The nucleus just went around. Okay. The cells, the cell will secrete the signal here. Okay. But it can be recognized by a distant one here. This is the cell. I can say 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay. So the signal from the cell number two, which is coming out in the blood and then it circulate, but it goes on the cell number six, because the cell number six is, uh, they have the receptors. You may wonder why these cells are not recognized, because they don't know the language, or they don't have the receptors for this particular signal. This is signal number two. So it will go and then it wherever there is can be understandable this language can be understood and language can be um, you know interpreted in a way or there is the receptors these are receptors and they can go on six and this process of the gland or the communication we call it as paracrine process so the one which we study earlier it's an autocrine Meaning the cell itself will secrete one signal and that signal recognized by its own receptors, we call it as autocrine process. The next one is the cell can secrete a signal and that can be recognized by a distant and uh, other neighboring cells otherwise we can call it as, uh, and, and then it can activate this. This process we call it as a paracrine process. 
Now, we will go on to the third level is suppose a cell which will produce okay, uh, the signal and that is passing through a blood vessel. Okay, and just draw, drawing a capillary or the blood vessels or the distance or the body. Okay, and then you will find uh, cells. It's doing over here, right? Like that. Okay. So, so it secretes into the intracellular fluids, and then it's getting into the capillaries, and it can travel in a di in a distance. It can travel there, travel, 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 always travel, and then finally, you know, you have some cells over sitting over here. They have the receptors. So from this end to this end, you have a distance, a long distance. But it secretes by, by vesicles and the signals is getting the intracellular. These are these cells where you have the gland which will secrete. And this secretion is getting into the capillaries, but it is a distance path. Suppose it is, this is present in, in the head and then maybe this is maybe on the kidney. So the distance, imagine the, the distance between the part one to the other. So this travel through the blood and then it reaches there where you have the receptors. So this part we call it as an as a endocrine process. Endocrine. Okay, so here the release part in one side, release of the chemical, and the target is the distant. <coughs> release in one side and the target is going to the other side, but the long distance, and that is being covered by the black capillaries. And this process we call it as endocrine process. You follow all these three processes which we covered, autocrine, paracrine, and then endocrine process. Okay, these are the signals and how they they go from one part of the other. Now we will go on to the exocrine further uh, versus endocrine process. Okay, the, what we have seen as a as a, a, a as a exocrine glands, the pre, pre I mean before in the digestive tract, exocrine glands. Another one is the endocrine glands. Okay, so if you do, you see outside, outside of body. Come to that point. See, look at this uh, process of hydrochloric acid secretion and the enzymes. You know, in the stomach, it's a, it's a very good uh, example. Suppose if these are the cellular lining, okay, and, uh, and these are the esophagus or, or in the stomach, in the, in the lumen of the stomach, okay. So what happened, these cells which are present as a parietal cell and uh, the zymogen and all those cells will secrete into the, into the space here where the water uh, are the H plus ion, chloride ion, and then you have a protein or zymogen, all of them are present in a gastric pit like the space and then it is going outside the part. So this is outside of the body because it's a cavity. Though it is present inside but it is not inside the cell or the blood but it is coming onto the lumen part. So this part which we call it outside of the body and the secretion which is to the outside of the body we call it as endo, uh, sorry, exocrine glands. Exocrine is the, the enzyme Okay. and other proteins which is going to the outside of the body surface, we call it as the exocrine glands. Endocrine glands, in other words, what we just now we discussed about it, these cells, okay, this is the blood capillaries. These are the blood capillaries which is going over there. And the cells, the endocrine cells, endocrine gland cells, which will, which will secrete into this. These are, are the blood capillaries. How they will do it? You know, in the cells, in the endocrine cells, 
they have a specific receptors and they receive a signal, either the neuro signal or any other chemical signals will order the cell, hey, come on, I need certain hormones, no, I'm lacking, why don't you secrete that hormone? So once they get the command, it will release onto the intracellular space, this space, and then it is migrated into the blood capillaries, and this is the blood capillaries will transport at the, to the distance part of the thing. So major difference is the exocrine and endocrine gland is endocrine gland secretes the hormones and that the signals and that getting into the blood capillaries, whereas the exocrine glands that secretes the products, the enzymes and, and the other uh, ions or the products into the body, outside the body or outside the blood capillaries, you know, inside the lumen. So this is the two different process that we want to study that, okay. We will see now how this is going to be effective in endocrine cell, on one endocrine cell because our um, problem today to study are the hormone cells, okay. So what happened in the endocrine cell, endocrine cell, what happened to you? And it also activated by, activated by neurons. In other words, we also have endocrine, normal endocrine cell, and otherwise we call it neuroendocrine cell. Because the, there is a neuro in, uh, neurological origin or the no ending origin also endocrine cell or hormone. Okay. Neuro, endo cells. Okay, how that initiates to secretes into your hormone. Okay. Now, just to draw a picture, uh, the blood vessels which is going over there. Okay, this blood vessel. The blood is running through here. And I'm drawing a neuron. Okay. This is the axon of the neuron. I don't know if you know the histology, you know about it. And this is the nucleus of the cell body. And then you have a dendrites. You know about the dendrites? Just like a rabbit ears, right? And uh, this is produced, I mean, connected with the synapse. This is the neuroendocrine cell. This is the axon and nucleus. This is the neuroendocrine cell, this, this one, neuroendocrine cell. And this is being connected by another axon from another neuron, which is the another neuron which is going over there. And this is being connected with uh, this one, dendrites, okay. Here you find synapse. That's the joint between the axon to the dendrite. We call it synapse or synapse. So when Whenever there is an action potential, action potential is the changing in the charges between the membrane, meaning there is electric current, a bioelectricity, an order which is coming over the action potential that stimulate the synapse to release certain neurotransmitters. And these neurotransmitters will receive in the dendrites of the neuroendocrine cell, dendrites. Then it passes the message to this through the axon and where you get more of endo, uh, endocrine cells will package with the vesicles. And these vesicles now releases this, you know, the hormones into the blood capillaries. So this process which is going in one side, so now you get neuroendocrine secretions which is coming into the blood. So after the attack, uh, after the command uh, and after the action potential from the neighboring neurons and getting in the neuroendocrine cell and that will release the uh, vesicles and, and now this is being secreted. That's the release process. Once this neuroendocrine in the blood and it can travel through and then you will find in, in another distant part another uh, endocrine gland cells which is accumulating nearby. So it might go over there where you have a specific receptors, which I mentioned before. And these receptors will receive this neuroendocrine and thereby it can synthesize certain hormones and that hormones also which is being 
released into the blood. So, there is a link between one endocrine cell, that is the neuroendocrine cell, that can activate a release of neuroendocrine or uh, the hormones and that circulate in the blood that been received by distant part of another endocrine uh, cell. This is the endocrine <coughs> cell number two and this is the, we call it number one. So the one which is being activated and then that hormone which is released and that is being received, this is also being regulated for the release. So this is responsible for this, okay. So this cannot activate its own process of release of hormones without the help of this one. So there is some sort of a coordinating between the one endocrine glands into the another one. In other words, the neuroendocrine cell in this case is responsible for the activation of the another endocrine glands. You follow that sequence? See, we studied first of all with the autocrine and then paracrine and then endocrine glands. And now the endocrine glands, how that is being activated? The process is using one example here, neuroendocrine. And this neuroendocrine cell is being activated by an action potential of another neuron. This is the different neuron. So this is being observed. Where you may wonder why I'm getting this one, where this signal is coming from. Suppose this is you are getting a um, so, sort of a external environment or the influence or any other part of the stress. So your neurological system is being activated. At that time, it will activate the neuroendocrine cell first and then it is going through the blood and the blood and the distance location of the endocrine cells being activated and thereby you get the more of the hormone from this which is going to be secreted into the bloodstream. So this part you should understand the, how the cell communication in the, in the, the process of the endocrine glands. Okay. Now the next part is we can study the origins um, of this communication from prokaryotes. Okay, origin, where do you get this? Because when we study the multicellular organ, organisms, and, and, and this one will, uh, will get a, a simplistic uh, view to observe. In the prokaryotes, for example, prokaryotes, that's in bacteria, okay, bacteria, it's uh, the chemicals are the signals which depends upon for the food and then as well as for the sex. For both, the bacteria can depend upon the chemical signals, okay. So let us see. In bacteria, you may wonder why I'm talking about the bacteria. Bacteria is not having hormones. No, it, we are talking about the chemical signals. In, in, in uh, multicellular organisms, we call it chemical signals as hormones, but in the prokaryotes, we call it as a chemical signals. Okay, in a, in a bacterial, hemotaxis, what happened? Let us see. Bacterial hemotaxis. Taxi means, you know, one power, one place to the other, you know, just you are transport, right? So taxis. But the chemotaxis means a chemical which attract the bacteria, or uh, the bacteria has been dragged by a particular type of chemical. So the chemical that is drive the bacteria from one place to the other, that why we call it as a chemotaxis. What is the chemo and what is the taxis now in bacteria? Let us see. Suppose this is a bacteria, okay? And this bacteria, they have a, a flagellum just going around here, okay? It can rotate from one direction like that, okay? And they have a receptors for amino acids, this bacterium. This bacterium, just I'm talking about the singular bacterium, okay? And this amino acid, as soon as this bacterium senses an amino acid, okay, it by the receptor, this is the bacterium amino acid receptor, it senses this, it sends some signals inside the bacterium. And then it rotates from one direction to the other, or you, in, in matter of fact, you have a three of this, of the, and then a clumped together, all clumped together as soon as it finds your food. So when it rotates in one, and, and the bacteria 
the bacterium will move a straight line. Straight line. It can move because it, it uniformly together it rotates and, and the water it swims in, in a same direction. This is the one part of, of the bacterium which will sense with amino acid and thereby it can transport. Okay. This process we call it from as soon as it senses the amino acid, this process and the different process which is taking place inside the bacteria, we call it as signal transduction. Signal transduction, I write it here, transduction, signal transduction. So this process, signal transduction process. Suppose if there is no amino acid are present over there, okay. So what will happen here if this is a bacterium, okay, and receptors and no amino acids and this flagellum going crazy, which is going over there and this is going over there and this is going over there. So if it moves, it rotates on its own way, what will happen for this bacteria? Tumbling, right? Do you understand that part process? Tumbling. Tumbling process. It's going all over the place. Okay, I'll draw it in a, in a different way. Bacteria, which will move from one place, this is a one place, the first time, second, so because it's having amino acid with amino acid. So it travels straight line. The bacterium will travel in a straight line. Suppose there is no bacteria, sorry, sorry, no amino acids present. So what will happen, this will go crazy, will go here, and then it 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 will come here. So it, it goes not as a straight line, but it is a tumbling way. So the behavior of a bacterium will change or the movement or the, or the transfer from one place to the other or travel of micro uh, bacteria or here in this case on bacterium will change because of the presence and absence of amino acids. If the amino acids are there, it's good. Otherwise, it is not. For example, if you are going through... Uh, hungry and if there is a food then you right away you just drive into the you know fast food store and then eat if not what will happen you are hungry but wherever you go on a petrol station go oh man it is not there there's no food they'll go to the another one and they close down they put a signboard everything and they close and another one you are opening and just not because in the night time they have something but they don't have juice or you know or the drink so you are going everywhere because you search for the food the same way this bacterium itself will look for food in a, in not in a straight way, but it is going in different locations and then in search of food. So signals helps to find the food and because of the internal environment which is taking place the signals. Do you follow that part? Yes, from Shinko Ranch? Yes, sir. How the signals will help for the organism to find its food. Okay. Now, we will go on to the same topic, I mean same mechanism on to the multicellular. How, how and how, what happens in a multicellular, multicellular organism, okay? Otherwise we call it as a eukaryotes, eukaryotes, we are eukaryotes, right? We have that. Here, well established chemo detection, chemo detection is well established, well established, okay? And the way it is being done by cell to cell communication. Cell to cell communication, okay? In a different state, like a cellular state, the communication from the cellular state on tissue, the tissue level, the communication, we call it tissue state, Okay, and uh, the cell state we call it in a, in a way. This also helps in understanding physiology. Okay, and then tissue state of this communication we will find in development. Development of an organism. Development stage. Okay. 
Now, the coordination between the physiology onto this development, okay, by the communication. I'll put it in a different way now here. Coordination. How to coordinate the physiology into the development. Coordination of development. coordination of development. This process by cellular communication. That communication which is coming from what is called, we call it as a hormones. Okay. The hormones will help to develop in an organism. So that's why we have a, a, a different type of hormone at the early stage and from the fetus to the adult and to the old age, you find this process is throughout the aging process, it changes. Coordination of development, that is in physiological process by communication of the chemical signals, that is from the hormones. So we will see the hormone. First hormones, what, what are these hormones now? That's what we are going to see in, in our class. So, so far I'm giving some short introduction, now we are going the real part of hormone. First, hormones. <coughs> what are hormones like? They are nothing, as I mentioned before, they are the chemical signals, signal signals. Now we are talking about hormones and these hormones in multicellular uh, fashion and they are call it as chemical metabolites. What is that chemical metabolites? I know about chemical, what is metabolite, metabolites? You know what is metabolites means? Suppose if you, if you eat food and that is going to be converted into carbohydrate, protein and fat, whatever you are eating it, or vitamins, and this is going to be metabolized, carbohydrate into glucose and protein into amino acids and peptides, right, and the fat in the fatty acids, and all this process, which is a, a, a different combination of all these together, and they call it as an individual Product of metabolism. Product of metabolism. What is metabolism now? This process from the higher uh, complex food into the simplest form, we call it metabolism. Now I want to define what is the process of metabolism. Metabolism is being, um, is the process of two part, right? One is anabolism, anabolism, another one is catabolism, okay. Anabolism is the synthesis of compound like a synthesis of protein, synthesis of new carbohydrates, synthesis. Catabolism is the breakdown, breakdown of products, of the, of the metabolites, of the products, okay, that's on the uh, synthesized product, I can call it as. Synthesis product are the proteins. So breakdown products, the process we call breakdown. So the metabolites is nothing but uh, some of them are synthesized, some of them are breakdown products of these metabolites. So that's why we call it as a chemical metabolites and they are the hormones, okay. Chemical metabolites, otherwise they call it as a byproducts can i call it as a byproducts now byproducts of cell specific catabolism catabolism now i want to what is cell specific we have there are different types of cells in our body okay but not all cells are not producing hormones they are capable of producing it, but there are restrictions over certain type of cell type. So that's why we call it endocrine glands. If you know histology, we have studied a different type of gland, different type of tissues that is responsible for secretion of the hormone. And the hormones is a chemical and that is a, a byproduct of cell specific. A particular type of cells will produce the catabolism and that is the hormones and they have a unique chemical signature. These cells have unique chemical signature, meaning this is a unique for that particular cells. 
which will secrete only that particular chemicals from that particular tissue. So it's a specific, unique chemical signature for that particular cell type. And they are physiological, physiological, and they are also used in developmental, you know, the chemical signature, the physiological process as well as the developmental stage. Developmental states will produce. And if you, if you detect these chemicals in a particular cell type, in a tissue, you know, if you have a, uh, the, you know, 10 different types of cell, and, and then only one particular type of cell will produce this hormone, meaning that will give an idea for detection and specialization. Okay, I'll write it in a different sheet, like a detection of hormones, okay, that gives a specific signature of that cell type, of that cells or tissue. So you will not see any other tissue will produce this hormone. For example, Glucagon, as well as in um, insulin, is secreted in pancreas. It is not secreted in intestine or colon or brain. Only one particular cell types are doing that particular job. So the specific signature of the cell, if you detect this hormone, for example, insulin, in a, in a, in a, in a 10 different cell type, and you will find, if you find that secretion of insulin, then you will say, hey, this is the beta cells of Langerhans and that is for the insulin. It is not as a brain, it is not in the stomach, or it is not in the colon. So that is, the, if you detect the hormone, meaning you are indirectly, you are, you are identifying the particular cell type or tissue. So that's why we call it as a specific signature of the cell. Um, you know, the way which you, 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 you identify a particular person, you know, how you do, how the person is behaving then you you did uh, you are going to identify you are going to probe him out you are going to pattern a particular type of personality. The same way, if you want to uh, pattern a particular type of cell, you have to see the behavior of that particular cell. The behavior in this sense here, you will get more of this hormone in a particular cell type. Then you can say, hey, this particular cell type is specialized for synthesizing the hormone. Okay. So now we will go in a little bit in a deeper sense. What are the different types of hormones are there? Okay. Now we are going to see hormone classes. We are going to classify the hormones. Okay. You know about the steroid hormones? Steroids. Okay. Another type here is you have a thyroid. And then another type you can get as a peptides, peptide hormones, thyroid hormone, peptides and protein hormone. Okay. So these steroids, they are membrane soluble hormone. We call it further. We are giving a specification now. They are soluble, membrane soluble hormones, okay, and this steroid hormone or membrane soluble, they have the receptors. As I mentioned before, if there is a hormone, there should be a receptors, okay. So the receptors, they are present in cytosol for this. Receptors present in cytoplasm, cytosol, in other words, we call it cytosol, cytoplasm. Okay, so these two, steroids and thyroid hormone, they are membrane soluble and they are also, we call it as a, a water insoluble. You will get some questions from here, right? I mean, some multiple choice questions and classification. Steroid and thyroid, they are membrane insoluble. Steroids and thyroid hormones are membrane soluble. 
and the steroids and thyroids, the hormone, they have the receptors in cytoplasm, in cytosol, the receptors are there. The another type of hormones we call it the protein or peptide hormone and they are membrane insoluble, membrane insoluble. Watch the spelling, soluble and insoluble, okay, peptides. And uh, they, they have the receptors at the membrane level, cell membrane, membrane receptors. Logically, if you think, it can soluble in membrane, so there is no receptor, there is no need for the receptors. So the steroid thyroid can easily soluble in the membrane and then getting into, into the cytoplasm where the receptors can bind. Where, whereas here, these peptides and proteins, they are not soluble in the membrane or the biological membrane or the cellular membrane. So they need yeah, membrane receptors so that they can capture these peptides or the proteins and thereby they relay the signal inside the cells. Uh, let us see. The next one is... Uh, Another type is the catecholamine. Catecholamines. This is also hormones. And an example, good example here is epinephrine. Epinephrine hormone. And also in local prostaglandins. That's the local prostaglandins. Okay. This also type of hormones there. And they also, they, they also the water soluble, okay, the receptors. And prostaglandins in you know, both sides, we will see in a, in a different way now, okay. They call it as a paracrine, they are paracrine, which I mentioned before, the paracrine glands, prostaglandins. These um, catecholamines, uh, they have uh, epinephrine and norepinephrine, that's an example. They also has a membrane insoluble, I mean the receptors, uh, they are present in the cell surface. They are membrane insoluble, these compounds or these hormones insoluble, just like a peptide. And they have the receptors, where? Receptors at membrane, membrane or cell surface they have. They have, they are membrane um, insoluble and also they, they also have the epinephrine, they also have a cytosolic, sorry, cytosol, membrane receptors and also the biochemical processes uh, that is also taking place for the DNA expression over these catecholamines. Dr. Silva? Yes. Coming up. Um, the catecholamines is a separate category besides the um, steroid peptides. Yes, yes, that is correct. Oh. That is correct. And also prostaglandins. That's also. That is right. Category. That's okay. right. Prostaglandins, another category, another category. That's right. Cytosol. Yes, it, yes, cytosol. They have the receptor for the cytosol. They have the receptors on the cytosol. Um, uh, yes. They are membrane insoluble, but some of them they have uh, yeah, different types. You know, if you if you synthesize artificially making the synthesize of this particular receptor, I mean uh, catecholamines as a drug, they have um, you know membrane soluble one, and they have the receptors in the cytosol as well. But in general, if you if you if you talk about this, these are totally the membrane insoluble and. They have processed into the membrane receptors and then transported into cytosol and then it's getting into the DNA and thereby it, it expresses the one. Okay? It has the both path, it is there. Now, if you want to go on to the, the next process on the prostaglandin, have you ever heard of non sterile anti inflammatory drugs? They are the COX-1 and COX-2 inhibitors, COX-1 and COX-2, the cyclooxygenase, which will produce more of prostaglandins, and that is causing more on, on the inflammatory process as well as in cancer. So the drugs which will, which will inhibit the COX-2 will control both inflammation as well as in certain type of cancer. 
So that's the process where the drug companies, they are looking forward into the prostaglandin. They, in some textbook, the prostaglandins, they call it as a signaling molecule. In some, they call it as a, as they call it as a hormones, like prostaglandin also, they call it as a hormone. So that's why it's a both way it can work out, okay? Okay, now. Could you repeat that about the cancer part, sir? Yes, the prostaglandins, they are different types of prostaglandins are there, okay? And that is being secreted by paracrine glands, paracrine glands. You know what is paracrine glands? When I just mentioned the one cell which will produce this and a neighboring cells, um, and, and then it will initiate the neighboring another type of cells. It is not like a hormone, but but looks like a hormone, like it secretes and then it's having receptors in a different uh, neighboring cells. And, and this type of function is called it as a paracrine function. So prostaglandins are synthesized as a paracrine fashion, are the glands, and they secrete from the phospholipase enzymes. Okay, I'll just uh, uh, put it like this. You know, you, this is the membrane, uh, lipid bilayer membrane, a lipid bile. This is one layer of lipids, the another layer of lipids, and this is the triglycerides. And these a phospholipase A2, phospholipase A2 will act on these triglycerides, and that will the result which will give you a diacyl glyceride as well as the monoacyl uh, glycerol moiety here. So you have a free fatty acids or the long chain fatty acids is, is, is floating around, and this is being. Uh, um, you know, uh, activated by cyclooxygenase 1 as well as cyclooxygenase 2, and then it will produce a cyclic peroxides, cyclic peroxides. The cyclic peroxides is nothing but the prostaglandins. And these prostaglandins will, will act too, you know, some of the prostaglandin will activate like a vasodilation, and some of them which is go on vasoconstriction. So it does both function, depending upon what type of prostaglandins it will, it will do either dilation or the constrictions part, okay. So in the, in the COX-2 inhibitors where, uh, I mean, sorry, COX-2 uh, enzyme will produce more on, on the vasodilation process and thereby it increases the uh, blood flow. And uh, in cancer, the blood flow increases to, in order to supply food to the tumor tissue. So whenever if you harvest the tumor tissue, you will find the highly elevated of the cyclooxygenase 2 part of that one. And when it does, it also shuts off the vasoconstriction process. So it is channelized towards this part. But still people are working how we can, uh, we can work on the COX-2 and the COX-1. COX-1 will also do the same thing, but the target for the COX-1 is, uh, is different from COX-2. COX-1 is mainly in the small intestine, intestinal epithelium to blood flow to the absorptions and other part. And it is nothing to do with the COX-2. But if the intestinal ulcers are there, you get COX-2 level, it is going, in, it, it is increased with the COX-2. So that's the process of the inflammations and everything. So it, it's out of the topic what we are discussing today, but since you asked about this, so I'm explaining to that one, okay? Do you have any questions? So, no, thank you. okay, great. The another one I want to just mention about uh, in the chemical communication is pheromones. Okay, P H E R O M O N E pheromones. They are help in communication of individual communication. Individual, individual to individual. Okay. In the jellyfish, jellyfish, and the type is uh, Aurelia, Aurelia, A-U-R-I-T-A, Aurelia areta, that's the species name. And they secrete some sort of iodinator, iodinator tyrosine. The iodinator tyrosine is something like in a humans, we call it a thyroid hormone, thyroid hormone. Okay, and this secretion will help for the development or coordinates the development. 
process. Okay, so this is the pheromones, and the pheromones in in some cases, you know, it can coordinate like a hormone. It can coordinate for the development helps, and the insects, the another part in the insects. Um, it acts like a sex attractant, okay? Sex attractants, they call it as an ants. They used to, you know, the ants will have a, a, its own caste system. It won't allow any other type of ants. It has its own caste. So it can easily identify the caste system. And also the social insects, social insects. In the sociobiology, we may notice about the, how these uh, and the insects can and categorically, you know, clunk together its own social types, and also they they follow through the same trial, you know, the ant trial, because in the foot of the the leg of this uh, arm uh, uh, of the ants, they have secretes of the pheromones, they sniff that particular pheromones and then they can follow through, like this is the ant which is following through, it is sniff, then another uh, this is going so. So it will go through, you know, at, at the same, you sniff here and then it follows, sniff here and then it will go through. So that's the part. Also they have an alarm signal. If something is going on, it gives some alarm signal of the pheromones and so that the followers, they may not go over there. So that's a very interesting part we can note, okay. And also the another part is the goldfish, where the steroid metabolites, which has been secreted in the water, steroid metabolites. The secretes in the water uh, are in the urine so that the reproductive behavior of the male and the female can be can be easily been followed through using the steroid metabolite so that the male will will accept okay female is ready now they go oh, they go and mate so that kind of um, you know the the steroid metabolites in, in in the goldfish helps in sexual development Okay, for mating behavior. So that's the part of uh, the pheromones. Okay. Now, the hormone coordination, how this hormone is being coordinated? Hormones coordination. Coordination. How the hormone regulation of coordination is mainly through homeostasis. Homeostasis. See, we don't want too much of hormone in, in one particular place, you know. So we want the hormone a certain period of time and then it's switched off, right. That maintain, maintain steady states, steady states, maintain steady states. And this communication, cell communication is a, its own feedback. Communication will have its own feedback, okay. Feedback mechanism. What is feedback? mechanism. They have a positive as well as the negative feedback mechanism. Suppose if this is a, a target cell and this is the another cell over here, okay, so it will, the hormone may activate this cell, it increases, okay, otherwise what will happen, the product of this hormone itself Will, will or the product of the neighboring or the product of the effector or the targeting cell, this is target cell, which will give a signal to stop it. Hey, I have done my work, you please stop it. So it gives another signal to this hormone or this endocrine cell to stop it. So this is, we call it as a negative feedback. The another one type of feedback is a positive feedback, okay that the cell which is secreting the endocrine gland and this is the neighboring cells and the another target cells, T for target cell. So it will produce a little bit and the signal will go here and then finally what will happen, it will produce more. Hey, I need more, I need more. So this is a positive feedback. So that depends upon the strategy, depending upon the need this hormone is being coordinatedly released in an off as well as the on position. You follow that? The positive feedback and negative feedback in the hormone coordination. Yes? You follow? Okay, now I give a break now, five to ten minutes, and then come back and then we'll go on to the next part.
Do you follow from Sync Orange? Any questions? Okay. How many of you are one, two, three, four? Only four people there in Cinco? Six, sir. Oh, six. Oh, okay. The other part, I haven't seen that one. Okay. Yes, go ahead. Um, do you know the exact articles that we're supposed to do the homework over? Because uh, there's a little confusion on what uh, oh, we're supposed to write on. You don't have that one? Uh, let me see. I should have, I should have the one you about 1983. That's not the right one. Oh, he's not, he's not there? Okay, 83 or? Uh, probably 83, probably. I'll, I'll, I'll go through it now. No, don't worry about it. Let me see. Okay, here you go. And da, 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 yeah, 83 is the one other thing. Is that right? Yes, 83. One and uh, other one. Another one is the 83, but you can choose 32. You can give this number so that you can go and do that, okay? 32. And. Um, Go ahead. And then another one is uh, absorptions, transport, 23, 32, 23, and um, uh, 22 is the same one, but 21, that is a liver transplant. And then these are the HIV, that's on 19. And, uh, and some of these are the, are the drug and, and, and um, the 
effect of that. Yes, I'm just getting it. And then uh, 13, one more, these are um, mechanism and ileal mucosal uh, bile acid absorption um, that is on uh, 2001. Uh, then how we study this method is to probably on 8, go ahead 8, uh, yeah go ahead. Yeah, I was saying I read pretty through, but uh, actually I couldn't find what you were asking us. So yeah. what I did, I did some of mine, but I took 2811. Oh, you did that one, 2811? Okay. There, there's nothing on the two really, because that's on the cancer cells, and uh, probably you can go through six, eight. Okay, six. No, I'm, I'm, six, eight, eleven. That's what I mean. Oh, they don't have it. Oh, okay. I'll I'll ask uh, uh, just what I sent to the students today here in Sugarland. You can email them so that they will give you uh, the full uh, paper to them. Okay. So normally, yeah. Go ahead. I mean, like, I already submitted mine, so I'm going to do this again, because I did 6, 8, 11. That's where I found the glucose and IBAT and all that. Okay, okay. So, if you email the, to the librarian, on the UHV librarian, and probably they will, they will be able to get those uh, articles for you, okay? No, I mean, I already submitted, I already sent you, like, my, my summaries. Okay. Then, uh, yeah, the study I did was from... 6, 8, and 11, but not on 32. Okay, okay. 32 was like the No, don't worry about, no, don't worry about 32 right now, but, 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 but that's one other thing with the experimental thing, that's all. Okay, that's the mainly on the mechanism of absorption, which is there, if you do on 68, so that'll be okay. So, if you do on 32, um, and then, um, 23, 21, 19, 13, 8, or 6, so, you know, from this, if you refer a few papers, that will, that will help, okay, to understand. Uh, so, good. Yeah. So, we just pick three from any of those? Any, any of those, yes, yes, any of those, correct. If I give now 32, 23, 21, 19, 13, 8, or 6, you can pick up any three, and then you can give, you know, what type of work you need, okay? And just summarize each one of them? That is correct. What method is up? What, what is the aim, what, what is the method, and what is the discussion, what you understand mainly from this paper. Okay. That's what I want. Okay? Okay, now, let me stop here. Not yet? Okay, let's see. I'll just uh, walk you through about uh, um, some of these uh, animations and uh, I mean these PowerPoints where if you find the autocrine and paracrine functions how this, the red mark is just being a physical cell. And here you see the receptors, which is secreted by its own cell. Paracrine is the neighboring one. It, it comes out, but it goes on to the, on that part. And then here you find the neuroendocrine actions, so the neurons and that activate and getting onto the bloodstream. And, um, you know, you hear the hormone molecules on the spire. And then you can also have the target cells, which will be activated either the neuroendocrine as well as the hormones and, and there you will get a positive or the negative secretion of these cells, okay, target cells. Autocrine, the target cell, its own self, 
but paracrine is the neighboring cells will have the paracrine that the receptors. But the endocrine cells, the hormone receptors are distant and that is the main difference on that part. Okay. These are the pheromones and how these pheromones will help to mate the fish in this. Some of these um, pheromones, there is a uh, mammalian gonadotropic hormones and yeast alpha factors and they both share the protein or, protein or amino acid sequences, some of them. So these are some of the studies they observe on these alpha factors. They change receptor bound, or once the receptor bound to the hormone, how they change it. It release and peptide concentrations. And there's there is some rough endoplasmic reticulum how the hormone is being um, activated and released. You can see this one here is packaged in the endoplasmic reticulum and then uh, it is going to Golgi and then it, it forms here in a, in, a, in a secretory vesicles all the hormones and then in the lumen where you know it by exocytosis it's filled it out. So that's what the process which is going through. So do not expect that something is synthesized and then secrete directly. No, it is not like that. It is secreted in the cytosol and um, then it is being packaged. The endoplasmic reticulum will take over and the Golgi vesicles travel and then it goes over there and then secretes. So, that is the part which we did study earlier about the exocytosis process. Okay. But the, how the hormone looks like, this hormone with amino acids and and sialic acid, you know, it uses monosaccharides or and threonine and inestate galactosamine and sialic acid. So, it forms our carbohydrates and proteins and amino acids and peptide linkage. These are the structure of the hormones, okay. So, now let us go on to the topic of the next lecture about the release and the actions on the targets. So, that is what we want to be here now. Hormones. Okay. Hello. Everybody is here. So we have studied in the first part chemical signals, endocrine system. This we have done. We have covered just the last lecture. Now we will see about the release and action. And third part is next uh, lecture specific examples. So, this we will take next class, but I want to teach now how the hormones are released and action. Okay. Let us see uh, the uh, cell and the cell will have, as I mentioned before, these are the packaging vesicles and it is releasing it, okay. Release, the cell or the endocrine cell releases and otherwise we call it an in, in transport into the blood, transport. And uh, the, the target cell is a target cell, target. This is the hormone endocrine cell, E cell, I said, no, endocrine cell and this is a target cell as otherwise it's called T cell here. This is my own uh, abbreviation, I mean do not don't take it, uh, this is a uh, standard one, okay. So, these are the receptors. So, so what will happen? These cells, when, when the hormones reaches here, how it is being released? How it is released? Okay. Now, hormone is, there are three step process, synthesis of hormone, synthesis hormone and then second storage of hormone, storage of hormones and three release of hormone, okay. And then here what happened in the target cell in this part, the target cell how it recognize recognition, how it recognize and then what is the response, what the next step biochemical response. See, there are two parts. One part is the release, how it is synthesized first the hormone, how the hormone is storaged, uh, it is storehouse inside the cell, then how it is released 
into the bloodstream. So this we need to know. And then once it is released, it has been transported. How it has been transported? Another part we have to study. And then once it is transported, it arrives on the pore. It arrives on the target cell. And then how this target cell receptors is receiving this hormone? And then what will happen inside? Response, biochemical response. What happens inside the target cell? So when you covered this, then we understood everything on hormones. Okay. Okay. We know very well about the water, sol water insoluble and water soluble. Okay. Water insoluble hormone. What is water insoluble hormone? Yes. What what are water insoluble hormones? Call it as steroids, right? Water insoluble hormones, right? And then water soluble. You have to be careful in the word water soluble, meaning they are called peptides or catecholamines. Catecholamines. Catecholamines and peptides and proteins, and they are water soluble, but they are membrane insoluble. Steroids are membrane soluble or water insoluble? Please understand the words. Water soluble, membrane insoluble. Membrane soluble or water insoluble, like that. Okay. So you you have to understood that basic thing. Okay. Now let us see about the steroid synthesis. Number one, steroids. Steroid. Synthesis and release. If you see the structure of steroids, they are coming from cholesterol. Cholesterol. Sterol. Cholesterol. Cholesterol. Okay. What is the structure of cholesterol? If you know the steroid structure. How many of you have done an organic chemistry before? Organic chemistry? No? Okay, now, here are the OH group. You have a double bond and, and satisfy, I put it in, instead I put it like that. Okay. So this is a, a cholesterol, skeletal molecule. Okay, this cholesterol is being now produced uh, uh, another type of molecule of called uh, pregnolone. Okay, this pregnolone is the same structure like cholesterol, but it's a derivative of cholesterol. Okay. Now this is the OH group, OH, and. Uh, yeah, I'm just uh, drawing because the structure is very important to understand the basic principle which is involved here. Here, C double bond O, then CH3. See, this moiety, this particular part, which is being oxidized, this part. So the cholesterol to pregnolone, P R E G N. And pregnenolone, pregnenolone. So this is the parent part. First is the cholesterol, and chol cholesterol to pregnenolone is the first step. Okay, and this is simply of oxidation this side chain of cholesterol. So there are enzyme, and that will act on cholesterol and produce this pregnenolone. And from this pregnenolone, you get a uh, a yeah, variety of sterol like uh, cortisol, okay, and uh, progesterone, and uh, estrogen, and testosterone, testosterone, and aldosterone, aldosterone. See, when you think. Oh, for all this, the origination is cholesterol. And then the first step is pregnant alone. From this, you get cortisol, progesterone, estrogen, testosterone, aldosterone is being produced. This is the synthesis part. And all these hormones are 
part we have studied before is membrane soluble that's what we study okay and they have enzymatically processed they process with the for each one the side chain of um, of this group which is oxidized from this it is derivative of this and something is going to happen here sometimes it's going to be happen here sometimes some, some addition is going to be here. so each changes of this uh, steroid ring you get a different molecule here and all of them are doing by enzymatic enzymatic processed processed by enzymatically all this process and it is also been taking place in the smooth endoplasmic reticulum which i just now i mentioned before all of them are synthesized and packaged in smooth er here er the endoplasmic reticulum and also mitochondria also is responsible for that mitochondria process some of them of this enzyme and then once it has been release into blood how by exocytosis release into the blood and in the blood if it comes out the steroid already you know it is a membrane soluble and water insoluble and it cannot stay just like that and they see they have a serum binding protein Okay, so, and it binds with the hormone, the serum binding protein binds with the steroid hormone, binds with steroid hormones, and then it has been transported across and the distance path of the body. So, if you see onto the power point, which I just now, I just mentioned before, um, the earlier one I'll just I'll show you here here in this one let me see could you see the PowerPoint there no no you can see that right here yes, endoplasmic reticulum smooth endoplasmic reticulum okay and this has been hormonally synthesized here and this package packaged and then the secretory vesicle is being produced in a Golgi and it is going over there and then is lumen where the apical membrane tight junctions and everything and and then here the blood vessels are the lumen so it has been pushed out so now you get once you reached here now what happened there in the um, you know the suppose it is in the blood and you get the proteins hang around there this cyclog so the hormone will bind in this one so these are the binding proteins and then it is transported. So when I mentioned before, the hormones have been synthesized and transported across. So how they transported? Something like a boat, okay? So it cannot go on its own, but it goes along with the binding protein. That you should understand that, okay. Now that it is floating, it is going over there. It is going everywhere into the blood. Where it will go? The transported serum binding protein now it reaches a port, a harbor, a cell, another cell, okay. It's swimming around, okay. It's swimming around there. This is coming out with uh, the hormone. And there, there are some specific cells at the end. This is another target cell. Target cell, okay. So they are already our membrane soluble and they have the receptor, R for receptors. So from here, in the extracellular fluid where you get these hormones and these hormones can come in these, these receptors are inside the cells as well because these are the cells and uh, the membrane solubility of this steroid will go here and bind to the receptors. I draw in a rather bigger picture now. This is a single cell, okay, and here it is a nucleus and you get here the receptors receptors, cytosolic receptors over there. So the, the, the capillaries and these hormones, H for hormones will come here, they easily pass through because there is no, uh, for this particular hormone there is no receptor, the steroid hormone there is no receptor on the membrane side, but the cytosolic here 
alpha receptors. They are present over here. So it will bind over here. So H will bind, H will bind over here. And then there are two parts. Once it binds here, it can directly go across the nucleus and getting in touch with the DNA molecule. It can directly bind to the DNA and do this transcription or it, it turn on the gene or turn off the gene that can be done by this. Okay? It, it binds with the DNA transcription factors. I'll, I'll draw in the next one or here. Transcription factors. What is transcription factors? DNA transcription factors. In the in the cell, I'll just draw. In the in the cell, suppose if the DNA, okay, double helical DNA in a you know you know in a package in the nucleus, you get uh, this DNA uh, which is is a starting codon, which will start the transcription process where to synthesize with RNA to to increase uh, in the mRNA a uh, particular protein. Okay, the protein one. Okay, this should be synthesized inside the cell. The gene is there in the DNA. This is the DNA. But in between that, how this process will be start off, you have the hormones. And the hormone will bind to nuclear transcription factors. So the transcription factors, I put a TF, it binds. The hormone will bind and then here it comes over there. It starts on the proton, I mean, uh, to promote our site of the DNA. And then what will happen, it, it, it helps the RNA polymerase will come and bind together and thereby it starts synthesizing the a messenger RNA. And once the messenger RNA and that is being translated into protein in the ribosome, so it is another process we call ribosome. And then the protein is synthesized and this protein is useful in the function, useful for the function of the particular cell. So the hormone targets directly with the transcription factors and uh, then it starts with the RNA polymerase and then it helps. If the hormone or the transcription factor which is not binding together, you won't get this process and no protein will be synthesized. So the hormone plays a major role in the transcription of DNA directly. So that you should understand, okay? So we'll see in a, in a process like um, number one, what we have seen, cytosolic, receptors. Receptors are present in cytosol or cytoplasm. They have the receptors, not on the membrane because of the steroids. Steroids are membrane soluble. So, this it is easily cross across the membrane and get into the cytoplasm where it will find the receptors. Okay. And then the receptors, in other words, they have DNA transcription factors transcription factors. Once the DNA transcription factors and they are normally they are dimers. There are two protein molecules. They call, we call it as a dimers and uh, these dimers in the in the vertebrates, in the vertebrates, vertebrates animals, you will have homo dimers. Homo dimer, same protein in the twice. The dimers, the another one in insects, insects, the the transcription factors, they have a hetero heterodimer. This is the characteristic of the receptors. I'm talking about the receptors. The receptors normally DNA transcription factors, and these transcription factors in existing is in dimers, always in a in a pair or two, two molecules together. And here in vertebrates, you get the similar proteins together as a homo dimer and the insects and the other invertebrates you have different two different types of protein we call it as a heterodimer okay you follow that part how the receptors i'm i'm giving a characteristic of receptors what type of receptors will bind homo dimer receptor and heterodimer receptors homo dimer receptors present in the vertebrate animal hetero uh, dimer or two different type of proteins to form a uh, heterodimer and this heterodimer again is a, like a DNA transcription factors which is acting as a receptor for a particular hormone. Yes? So now what happened here when did it binds to each other? I mean to the hormone and the receptors. They together, okay, they act on the DNA. They regulate. 
regulate gene expression. Either it increases the gene expression or it decreases. Okay. So, it is turn on the gene or turn off the gene, meaning the protein synthesis is off here and the protein synthesis is on here. So, both for the response of both depending upon the hormone and depending upon the protein, where exactly it binds, that depends. Okay. I put it in a simple this way. Suppose if the DNA is going like this, okay, DNA, very big one, okay, the molecule, double helical molecule, right, good. So the same hormone, okay, the hormone and the receptors can either bind on one side or it can go on bind with the another one, it can go on bind here, it can go on bind here, right, a different path. Wherever these transcription factors can bind to the DNA binding site, it can turn on certain gene. Suppose if it turn on, it's okay, but the same hormone will bind to the another type of gene there and it can turn off, it can inhibit, it inhibits the RNA polymerase. So, it does both the function, that's what you should understand. The one hormone, it won't give only one, no. The hormone will have several receptors and several genes and several chromosomes and several things is happening inside the uh, nucleus. So, you get this binding will turn on one gene, it turn off another gene. So, the function of hormone, it varies, okay. So, it all regulated by the diversity, I put it like this, diversity of responses, because it is not a uniform response, right. It, it does one thing one and the another one is a turn on or turn off. Response. Okay, number one, presence of receptors, that's very important. Presence of receptor, otherwise the hormone won't activate, okay. Presence of receptor. Two, and receptor isoforms are there. Receptor isoforms, that's also a major role, isoforms. Okay, this will give a uh, different DNA sequences binding property different, okay, form, different form, isoform, different form for the DNA sequencing binding property, binding property. So, as I mentioned before, the receptor decide, the receptor isoform that decide which will bind what type of DNA sequence. One type of sequence, the receptor isoform will activate. Another type of receptor isoform, another type of protein or receptors will turn off the gene. So, on and off, it depends upon the receptor isoforms. The hormone is the same one, okay? That's you should understand. So, we call it in this fashion as a, as a number three part is co-repressor. The co hormone can act as a co-repressors are co-activators, activators for the cell-specific proteins, for cell-specific proteins, these hormones can act as co-repressor where it turn off the gene, repress the gene means off the gene of the protein, no protein is synthesized. Co-activators means the gene is being activated in presence of this particular hormone and that respective isoform, they are responsible for the synthesis of a particular protein and they are cell specific protein. Why? Because these particular cells, they have cytosolic, cytosolic, membrane soluble cytosolic receptors of this hormone. Other cells, they do not have that type of, wherever you have this particular cytosolic receptors, then that particular cell type will activate this protein, but not all of them, not all the cells, they need not have this one of this particular protein. Do you follow this part, how this serum, uh, I mean steroid will activate into the cell? Yes? Sometimes what will happen, the target gene, which I mentioned before, 
the activate or core represent right target gene the steroid I put it as steroid hormone target gene they often they often yeah transcription factor protein transcription factor protein like a receptors receptors sometimes is a transcription factors protein but the steroid they also target these further increase for because the more steroid is coming so it needs more of its own uh, receptor so it will synthesize mostly it, it activates the transcription factor protein okay once these transcription factors are there then they activate or regulate the function regulate the function okay you follow now let us uh, go on to the next uh, hormone is a water soluble hormone what happened there water soluble we have studied the water insoluble that is steroid um, now water soluble and the membrane insoluble here and uh, these hormones synthesized and packaged like a vesicles and the storage and then release like a just like an exocytosis here yeah, the protein and peptides peptides proteins act as hormones peptides are like a hormone and catecholamines catecholamines they also in a you know in a, in a fashion of water soluble hormones here so we mentioned before how they activated the the model for the vesicles um, and the storage and release okay just like we we did study earlier this is being done like um, I just put a neuroendocrine cells okay and the cell body and you have the action potential and the axons and now you have the dendrites which is going over there and then you have a synapse for the another uh, neuron or the another nerve cells and here you have the synapse synapse and it will release it will kind of communicate here to dendrites receive the message and then action potential we call AP is action potential the changing in the charges that gives an action onto the surface of the membrane where you have a exocytosis where the vesicles is being released the hormone is released here the hormones okay now as I mentioned before they have um, uh, the process where the receptors now so it is in the blood and then going on to the receptors or the target cells. So the membrane protein complex that plays a major role. Okay. These vesicles, vesicles, okay, and they form a, a, a different type of um, a, a packaging. Okay. So that's the part we will study now package in a vesicle and the synapsin which is the one which is connecting it I'll, I'll draw in, in a larger picture suppose so this is your your your, your, your neuron and, and the ending process there this is the microtubule process where the package is being produced in the Golgi apparatus like you know and the microtubules will have a protein which is linked together and this is the vesicle this is called vesicle V for vesicle, okay, and for the, and then it will migrate from one place to the other, like this, okay, comes out, and then it moves, and then in the microtubule, this is called microtubules, microtubules. So this protein has been attached to the vesicle. We call it as synapsin. Synapsin, yes, Y N A P S I N, synapsin, and once this synapsin is broken down when the presence of the phosphate whenever there's a phosphate molecule is there phosphate molecule attached to it and it releases the vesicle okay 
And once it has been released, and it is going to be here, at the near the membrane, these vesicles. And the calcium, which is coming to the calcium 2 plus, calcium is entering into that neuron, into the cell. And as soon as the calcium will come over here, and it will, it will release this part. The vesicle is being, by exocytosis, it is being released. So when you think the, the, the storage of vesicles of these hormones, and that is being transported across inside the cell by using microtubules, and there is a protein which is attached to the vesicle, we call it as a synapsin. And whenever the synapsin is phosphorylated or in presence of phosphate, if more phosphate ions, and that drives this synapsin to the vesicles, breaking down, and more vesicle will travel, travel, and form in a line into the membrane side, inside the membrane. Then when the calcium level will go up, or when calcium transport across inside the neuro, neuro, neuroendocrine cells, where you, you get the release of this vesicle or fusion of the vesicle to the membrane and then it is released by exocytosis. So when you think of the storage and release, you should also remember calcium, I mean phosphate and calcium, they form a major role, calcium and phosphate. Okay? That's for the storage and release process. And, and this one, um, the phosphate uh, on, on, the, on the synapsin is phosphorylated by an enzyme called protein kinase. That's what it is, PK, protein kinase enzyme is responsible for this process. Okay. Do you follow how this is being released? Yes or no? So the the process, sorry. Yes, you don't follow anything. Okay, I'll explain now here. Uh, the as I mentioned before, the proteins are the peptides are the catecholamines and they are synthesized inside the cell. Okay, they are synthesized inside the cell, and then they migrated. Suppose these are nucleus and membrane, mRNA, and everything is produced, and the protein is packaged in the endoplasmic reticulum like that before, right? So here, it, this is going to be in the cytosol, the protein, or the peptide, or the catecholamine, they are the molecules, and they have been packaged in a vesicle, and they are attached to the microtubules, because microtubules are the cellular cytoskeleton inside the cell. And when they move, the microtubules, they, when they move here, um, you know, they also carry the load, the luggage of this vesicle, which is loaded with with the hormones, okay. How they exist in the fact is this vesicle is attached to the microtubules with the synapsin, a protein, synapsin is attached to it. And when the enzyme phosphokinase, okay, phosphokinase which will attach to this, okay, this enzyme and when they phosphorylate this particular protein and, and then it releases this vesicle. So the vesicle is being released after phosphorylation and then it will move towards the membrane of the, of the cell. And then when the calcium get in, I mean whenever it goes up, when the calcium gets in, and the calcium will make this uh, fusion and make a release of this particular hormone to the blood vessel and, and our capillaries by exocytosis process. Do you follow that? Very simple. It presents, it's synthesized and microtubule packaging and, and synapsin, phosphorylation by phosphorokinases and then protein kinases and that will release. So now what you have here, synapsin, synapsin, it has been phosphorylated. Because of this phosphorylation, because the phosphate is added to the synapsin by protein kinase, and thereby, this, suppose this is the one, right? So synapsin is here. So because this basically has gone out, but this is being attached with the phosphate molecule. So if phosphate is attached to it, it releases the vesicle outside. So and thereby the vesicle can go in. Now the 
the phosphate which has been attached. So, that this is a microtubule, this phosphate is attached, phosphate is attached to it, right. So, we want to regenerate this. So, what will happen here, this process is taking place by protein kinase, kinase, K I N A S E, protein, P for protein, protein kinase, add the phosphate to it. And the another one, the molecule or the enzyme, we call it as a phosphatase. Phosphatase, P H O S P H A T A S E, phosphatase. Okay, this phosphatase enzyme will remove this phosphate group and thereby you get only the, you know, the synapsin will go in and then if you go here further, the vesicle is ready to attach to it and then it will go here and then it will come up. And then once it, it attached to the synapsin and the vesicles and again the phosphorylation which is, which is going on. So if you think this is a, the, this process which is coming here and phosphorylation or protein kinase is activated and remove the vesicle. And then it comes out down and then the phosphatase will remove the phosphate group out. Phosphate is being out. Phosphate is out. When the phosphate is out, then the only the synapsin only will move and then it will ready to take another load. So, this process and release taking the load and taking unloading it, taking the load and unload. So, this process which is taking place the protein kinases and protein phosphatases and calcium which is responsible for that. So, whenever the hormone, the peptide hormone is synthesized and released and, and then it requires the phosphorylation of the protein phosphorylation as well as phosphatase add of phosphate and removal of phosphate and in presence of calcium. You follow now? So, the, the, the magic here to understand for the hormone package, storage, release, you need phosphate as well as cal calcium. Addition of phosphate, release the vesicle, okay. And then from the vesicle to the exocytosis, you need calcium. That's all. Yes? Uh, still, you don't understand? Yes? From Sinko Ranch. Do you follow? Yes, sir. Okay. Good. Now, we will go on to the next part. What will happen inside? <coughs> that on the peptide, protein, catecholamine. Catecholamines, they are water soluble, you know, water soluble. Okay. As I mentioned, they are by exocytosis, these hormones are there. Okay. And they are further, as I mentioned before, they are already the protein or the peptide or catecholamine or water soluble hormones. And they also, they can easily swim because they are not water insoluble, so they can easily swim around, unlike steroids. It can go through. And then these are the blood vessels, goes through and as soon as it reaches the target cell, what will happen there? Okay, here the target cell, okay, and as I mentioned before, they have its own receptors at the membrane receptors. In the cytosol receptors for steroid hormone, don't get confused now. Steroid hormone receptors are present here, but the protein hormone or peptide hormone or catecholamine receptors are present at the membrane. This is the cell membrane. Cell membrane of what? Target cell. Now you get the blood here and the hormone H, the peptide hormone. I put a pH of peptide hormone which is coming out here. And what will happen here? You have the receptor, so the hormone can bind here. As soon as it binds, it won't keep quiet. It will order the change, the receptor configuration. The shape of the receptors will change. And then that will lead to second messenger uh, response. Second messenger, okay, response. Or otherwise, we call it as a signal transduction process. Okay. So when this hormone binds the receptors, 
and there is a lot of process which is taking place here, the signal transduction process. The process, one of the process, the first and foremost process which we need to study here is the G protein and G protein coupled receptors, G protein and G protein coupled receptors, okay. And they are transmembrane protein, transmembrane protein. Okay, what I'll do, I'll stop it here because you need to come next week and we will start from here, G protein coupled receptors, how the peptide hormone is going to be activated in a target cell. So that is our part. Okay, I'm not giving any homework for this week. So we will, um, we will go through, we will finish the hormone and then we will give us homework at the time. Okay, any question from any center? So do you follow now what we have studied so far? We have covered today about the hormone signals, chemical signals, right? as well as we did study about the synthesis and action of the steroid hormone which is right forward. But if you do on peptide hormones, now we are on the response we are going to look into the next week.